Hello, Mathieu from Syme here. At Syme, we've been working for more than two years on a very ambitious application called Picto. And today we are super excited because we can show it to you for the first time. If you're ready, we'd like you to walk you through some of its features. So let's go and dive right in. So what is Picto? Picto is a photo organizing app, but it's not designed to replace the apps that you know about, such as uh, Lightroom, Capture One, Luminar, Apple Photos. It's designed to play well alongside those apps. Uh, so why did we do that? We did it because we love those apps and we uh, have some of our photos in Apple Photos, but some of our photos we have in Luminar because we want to do special types of editing. Uh, some of our projects maybe we, we create in Lightroom or in Capture One based on the specific needs that we have as photographers. And as a result, uh, our photos are organized and some, some of the times they are all over the place. And it's very difficult to have a bird's eye view on all of our pictures, to run searches uh, across all of our catalogs, all of our uh, images. So we designed Picto to do that to gather all our images in one place without creating new copies. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is we wanted to re revisit, redefine how we visualize, how we explore um, our photo catalogs. And um, while some of these uh, new uh, paradigms for exploration are not yet visible in, the, in this beta, they, they will uh, come to the surface in the final release. Um, the third thing we wanted to do is also revisit how we share, how we collaborate. Um, and again, Picto has a very strong foundation to let us perform uh, new types of sharing and also new types of collaboration between the apps that you already know about. Uh, if you're ready, we're going now to uh, uh, walk through the demo, start from scratch and uh, add photos into Picto. Let's get started now. When you start Picto for the first time, you will be greeted by this screen. This is where you can drop uh, catalogs of uh, the supported formats or even folders uh, in order for Picto to ingest the data. You can also use one of these two actions. Um, for example, in the case where you don't know where your catalogs are, on which drive or in which folder, you can use this browser that will um, pass your um, any of the drives you select. Uh, you can even filter by the type of catalogs that you might want to, to add. Uh, and here it is. It, it just displays uh, useful information about the dates, about the content, and you can attach it to Picto. This will trigger the ingestion. Uh, as you can see, there is a little activity manager that pops up and that tells you what is uh, happening. And now this, uh, this catalog has been ingested. You can also use drag and drop. Let's... Um, Use a catalog here, Lightroom Classic, um, and take uh, the travel catalog. Right. Simply drop it right into the interface, and again, you can see the, uh, the little activity manager telling you that uh, something is happening and it's creating the thumbnail, and, um, and the data is now available. So what Picto has done here, it has uh, read the content of the catalog nat natively uh, and uh, it has uh, read all the metadata, uh, created thumbnails in its own little, little um, catalog. It hasn't copied any of the data uh, to another place. The, the, the data stays where it is, um, but Picto creates uh, the representations and uh, its own data structure for search and for display. If we open the sidebar here, we'll see now that these two catalogs are now uh, appear under the Lightroom Classic Catalogs node. So th this is where all your sources will be uh, will be gathered. Um, let's take another one of a different type just to see what's going to happen. Um, I'm going to take an old Aperture library here that I simply drop into the into the interface. Um, in that case, I get a little warning telling me that um, 
some volumes are offline and there's five masters are containing those offline more than you want to proceed or about in my case I can proceed it doesn't really matter um, because these offline, uh, uh, these offline data uh, still is represented in Aperture, so it will, it, they will show up. The, the previews will show up. I just can't access the masters themselves unless I plug that uh, that volume. And to finish, let's add also uh, simply a folder. Um, what can we add here? Um, oh, actually, here I have a little folder of exports. So now my sidebar looks like this. I have a node for my Aperture libraries, and I have one inside here. Uh, here I have a watched folders that where my folders are, are being represented, and I have one, and I have two Lightroom Classic catalogs. So this is the ingestion process. It takes a little time. I mean, I've I've added very small catalogs, so it, it was pretty quick. But uh, um, if you have tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of, of images, it will take time uh, in the first place to for Picto to to reference uh, that data. And remember, it doesn't make any copies of the uh, very heavyweight data that you might have. Your masters, your original files stays where they are, um, and uh, you will continue to use, of course, these uh, these uh, Lightroom Classics catalog, this Lumina whatever catalog uh, you have. Uh, it's probably the Mina Neo catalog, and uh, we support Neo as well. Um, they stay where they are. Picto simply reference the data in place. So this is the ingestion process. This is how you add data uh, into Picto. Now that we have some images in Picto, let's look at the different parts of the user interface. Let's look at the uh, interface. Picto lets you really configure your workspace the way you want in, in order to display or hide information uh, as you need it. Uh, here I'm looking at um, a particular uh, group of, of images uh, and I've decided to, um, to use a full view. Uh, so the, the viewer takes the whole, the whole area, the whole screen real estate. Um, you have a sidebar, which we've seen already, where you can you can see all your attached sources. Um, you can collapse it and collapse it. Um, then there is a, a middle column here, uh, and we'll, we'll talk about it right now. So the middle column is where you, we display the information about the current uh, catalogs that are selected, namely the structure, the, the folders, the, the albums, uh, whatever is inside them, and um, as well as keywords and as well as faces. So this this is information that we read from those catalogs and, and we display it here. Uh, it depends if you select, for example, um, a file hierarchy like this one, which is flat, has no subfolders, there is nothing in that column. Uh, if you select uh, uh, other types of catalogs, um, you will see whatever content is inside. If you select multiple catalogs at the same time, um, Picto will actually create a combination of uh, uh, whatever is inside those catalogs. So for example, in that case, let's take another one here. Um, I will see all the, the structure of my catalogs, uh, one right after the other. The middle column also contains the dates uh, that we extract from, from that data and uh, you can use it to uh, uh, make selection, filters, etc. You collapse or uncollapse this middle column using this button here. In, in the middle of the, the, the main screen is, is where your photos are displayed and um, uh, it's a quite classical uh, display with uh, uh, a zoom here you can you can choose the size of the uh, of the images you can also um, use some sorting uh, you have various criteria here that are exposed uh, to do uh, any type of sorting and of course uh, select the sort order and you can do some basic filtering such as uh, for example filter by um, by color tags these are these are information that are also read from the catalogs by flag status, by rating. Um, we have a view here, uh, a toggle rather than that lets you decide whether you view the um, 
you view your images by instance or your, whether you uncollapse the instance. Um, uh, we, we'll talk about it a bit more later, but uh, let's just look at a quick example here. Um, if, I, if I look at this image, there is a little badge here that tells me that actually yeah, I have three versions of that image in Picto, and I can um, I can unfold that uh, that group of images uh, simply by uh, clicking on that toggle. So this is actually display all the underneath uh, uh, versions that are inside. If we look more closely at um, at the cells here, we have various options uh, to display information and you can access them through the view option. So for example, I can click on this option that tells me that will add a little badge about the content itself. So here it tells me that uh, the content is in Lightroom and it's a raw file. Um, here I also see how many stars it has. I might see uh, also the color tag. Let me just check whether it's, uh, it is active. So if uh, an, an image has a color tag in the source catalog, it will appear here. This image, for example, has a flag. Um, right, you get, you get the idea. Here are some images with color tags, green tags, red tag, etc. So you can choose uh, what you want to display in, the, in this view. If you double click on an image, uh, we enter the detail view. Uh, so this is where we're going to display Pictos preview. And if we have a higher resolution preview available from inside the catalog, we are going to switch after a few seconds to, to display that high resolution preview um, here to get the best image possible. And you can zoom as well uh, in full detail to the image. You can either click on the cross, hit escape to go back to grid view. You can also use uh, here a number of key shortcuts to uh, switch between the various, the various views. Panoramizer is another mode for viewing the, the content and I'm going to uh, talk a little bit more later. But you can switch between those two, those three modes of, of content um, uh, using the, the little buttons here at the top using the, the keyboard shortcuts. You can also uh, use the navigation arrows to go back between the various views that you had. So for example, if I open this detail view, I can then switch back to uh, the, uh, the grid from here. The last part of the interface is the um, inspector. So this is where I'm going to see uh, all the information about the, um, the current selection. So here I have uh, information about uh, the, well, I have a little image. I can see that there are two versions here. Uh, I can switch between them as well from here. And uh, here I have a bunch of, uh, of uh, information about the, uh, about the versions that is currently selected. I can access all the exif of that image uh, as well as all the IPTC, whatever is in, inside here. If I look at... Uh, an image like this one. I can access the map or the GPS information if I have if I have GPS information is going to be uh, to be displayed here. We also display the name of the uh, uh, of the location based on reverse geocoding of the GPS information when we have the GPS information. At the bottom here, there is a little um, EXIF panel that always display information about the, uh, the currently selected uh, uh, image. So I can see the ISO, the, the, all the key EXIF information is displayed here. So this is basically Picto's interface. We designed Picto to be the central hub for all your images. And we wanted, therefore, to have Picto be the starting point from where you can navigate everywhere. This means we have to design, we had to design awesome navigation feature to let you find an image, to let you go to an image, to let you go to a collection, uh, go to a catalog from Picto. Uh, and uh, this is what I'm going to show you right now. To talk about navigation, we will go from the left to the right. 
when we designed Picto, we wanted it to be really the hub for all your images, where, wherever they are, in whichever format they, they live. Um, so in the, at the left, you can see, as we've seen already in the sidebar, all my attached sources. Uh, so this is the, the area from which I, I can navigate to a specific source, to a specific group of source. Uh, if I, for example, want to see all my Lightroom data, regardless of the catalog that I have, uh, here it is, it's now displayed here. Um, you can also browse your content by, by volume. Here, all my data is, sits on that disk, but if I have multiple drives that uh, have content, they will appear here, and I can do the, the search from here. Um, or I can select all sources, and then it will look at, it, at everything regardless. The uh, there is a, a little uh, shortcut here that lets me quickly find a source on the um, on a drive uh, if I forgot where, where it was. So that's also very handy. If I look at the middle column, this is where we replicate the um, the structure of the source. So let's just open that source um, right into Lightroom. So here we can see the collections that are present in Lightroom in that in that source, and as you can see, uh, Picto replicates fully the the structure of uh, of the, uh, the the content that I I have ingested. So I can use those albums to do exactly the same filtering that I did in uh, in Lightroom. Same for the keywords. I can use the keywords that we have read to actually do any type of um, filtering. So here there is no image shown, probably because there is an incompatibility between the filters that I've created. So let's unselect that album and I can see now the, the three uh, the, the three images that correspond to my selected keywords here. Um, you can navigate by date as well. So here we display all the dates and again I can do filtering here. So let's just suppress the filter on keywords to make sure uh, I can I can select by date. So this works exactly the same as um, in the uh, in the original content I had, except that I can now do that type of navigation uh, not only on one catalog but on, on all my catalogs if I want. So here now I have the dates of every catalog I have and I can select content that was shot in 2016, for example, uh, regardless of where it is. And um, let's take another example, probably. Right, so uh, I can then look at the images themselves to see what are the, in what, what catalog they live, right? Uh, based on, for example, the, uh, the little icon here that I can see. So Picto will, will, uh, will let me navigate through through the content um, using the standard options that I'm used to. Um, I can use search to uh, perform searches, uh, and again, it will uh, run those searches across whatever is selected on the left here. So this is a, a great way to actually access, let's say, all the, uh, all the images that were shot with uh, this particular lens, for example, in all my sources. But we don't stop here because, because we wanted to, to be able to, to really navigate. Um, I can also select an image, just select just one here, and I can open it in its uh, native catalog. Let's take another one. Right, I'm still in the same catalog. I can switch catalog and decide to open this image here. Now Lightroom will tell me that it needs to relaunch. And uh, so Picto does the hard work of actually finding where this, um, where this image lives and it will open uh, the catalog right there for me to edit. Let's do the same with uh, Lumina Neo. Um, it will launch the corresponding catalog and, and prepare the image for me to for edits. So we, we've redesigned Picto to be 
a hub from which you can access your existing apps, your existing content, uh, easily uh, see it, of course, but also uh, easily trigger edits by launching the uh, the host apps. And as we will see later, Picto will, of course, um, uh, maintain uh, maintain synchronization between its current state and uh, whatever has happened in those apps uh, as you add in more content or as you edited uh, data. When we designed navigation in Picto, we wanted to go much further than what we've just seen. And as a matter of fact, our images contain much more information than just the metadata we use to do traditional filtering or search. Uh, they contain information about content, about aesthetics, about colors, color harmony, about composition. Uh, sometimes they have defects. W what if we could use that information to create a whole new experience um, where we actually access those images based on those uh, characteristics they have, based on their content, based on the styles, uh, based on the colors. And that's what we've done in Picto in a feature called Panorama, and I'm going to show it to you right now. To access Panorama, simply click on the Panorama button right at the top of your, of your main view. When doing so, we will display the Panorama experience, and this is done by um, using all the scores that we've computed during ingestion. Remember the the uh, ingestion phase uh, was still leaving some tasks running in the background after the images appeared. And this is because uh, when you ingest content in, uh, in Picto, it does compute a number of things. It analyzes your image, it looks for content, it tries to categorize them, uh, it computes aesthetics, uh, technical scores of various kinds. And these scores are then used to create the view that we're looking at. Um, at the top, we, we are trying to bring out the, the most uh, distinctive images of the current selection. So here, I'm still looking at a very small selection of 150 images in, in Lightroom. Um, and Panorama is, is showing me what, what it thinks are the, the best images in that selection. Then underneath, we have uh, categorized uh, a number of points of view. The first one, called category, is, um, is looking at the type of content of your image and uh, it's going to create um, a line for each of the types that it detects. We currently support about 50 types, 15 types, um, such as uh, architecture, fashion, food, uh, wildlife, animals, people, etc. Um, and as you can see, those uh, the types that were detected are displayed here. Uh, and you can um, you can select, use the buttons to remove or uh, add uh, some of the, find, the ty types that were found. I can deselect everything and I maybe I'm just interested in architecture, then I will only see the architecture images in that view. If there are more images, you can scroll and it will display the, the images that he has sampled. Uh, and you can click on the see all button to see them all in a grid view. The second view is uh, the styles view, and here we try to detect uh, four styles of, of images, uh, abstract images, images from above, close-ups, and night images. As you can see, there are some errors in, in the night images, um, probably because of the type of content that, uh, um, that was misleading. The third um, tab here is uh, the color harmonies, and here what we're trying to do is we extract the color palettes from the images, and the palettes are displayed underneath those, uh, those thumbnails, and we try to categorize them in one of the standard uh, color harmony themes. Uh, color harmony themes are just um, uh, so, sort of layouts of your, of your colors on the color wheel, and they tell something about the, the image. So for example, if we look at complementary, uh, complementary means that images are, are sitting across to each other, uh, uh, along a diameter in the color wheel. And this is a type of image uh, um, that, is, uh, that is of special interest. Uh, then you have other, other schemes that are all detailed here. And uh, so basically we, we try to detect uh, those uh, color harmonies. Colors is, is another view, which will be empty here because there, there's no such uh, detection, but I'm going to look at all sources and it will pick up some colors. 
Uh, here the idea is to find images that have a strong uh, monochromatic uh, score. So for example, this image has a 98% monochromatic score. And basically, we try to detect the, the dominant color. Here it is, it is blue. And we are splitting the color wheel across a number of segments. Um, and we are putting the images that uh, are strongly mon monochromatic in each segment. So you can see in this, uh, in this library, I have a number of images that, that have a, a strong monochromaticity and, uh, and the, the color that is dominant is used to lay them out. The People's tab is, uh, is where we try to detect people in the images and um, we are grouping them um, by the number of, of uh, detected faces. Uh, so here, for example, I will have the lonely uh, line. So these are mainly portraits, uh, one, one person, except here where probably it hasn't detected that there were three people and probably the only person detected is this one in the background. And then we detect small groups, large groups, and people uh, and, and duos. So it's great if you, uh, if you have uh, images you know about that have people, uh, that, that a couple of people in them, that it's easy to spot them using that, uh, that line. The last one is, is about um, lightning and colors in the image. We try to detect bright uh, images, dark images, images with high contrast and uh, uh, low contrast, etc. So this is a great way to, um, to navigate through your, uh, through your libraries. Um, as I said before, Panorama applies to the currently selected source. So if I'm, uh, if I'm switching between the sources, uh, it's just going to apply the, the same uh, scores, scoring to the um, to whatever I selected. Same if I apply a filter, it's going to uh, uh, restrict its um, its scope to whatever is currently selected. So we think Panorama is a great way to uh, view your photo libraries in a, in a different way, to explore images um, and uh, to, to maybe disc discover hidden gems in, in your photo libraries. We hope you like it. When we designed Picto, we faced a new problem. As you know, in many uh, photo applications, you have this concept of versions, um, virtual copies. They, they mean that you start from one master file and you can create multiple versions of that file, for example, one with specific settings, then you create in black and white versions. They all come from the same file. And um, in Picto, we now have a new problem because we will gather um, many catalogs and maybe some catalogs contain versions of the same master. So how do we call that new concept? Um, so we came up with a, with a name and we call those instance. Instance is a, a way to gather under one umbrella, if you want, all the versions uh, of a, a specific master, regardless where they are, if they, are, if they exist as files, if they exist as uh, versions in Lightroom, virtual copies in another program, um, we all bring them together and we designed a specific interface for that and I'm going to show it to you right now. To talk about instance, we are going to concentrate on the top right corner of, um, of this little image. If you're familiar with uh, virtual copies in Lightroom or versions in other app or variants in Capture One, you've seen those badges. They tell you that uh, there is more than one um, version of this image in, in the catalog. And indeed, if I unfold the versions, I can see that there are actually two. Um, but Picto is a little different because, uh, because we gather information from everywhere. We will also tell you if there are versions in other in other apps. So if we take this example here, it's telling me that there are two versions available inside Picto, but only one is available in my current selection. So if I double click on this image, I can see that indeed there is one version in Lightroom, that's my current selection on the left, but there, are, there is another version somewhere that lives as a file. If we go down here, in this particular image, 
I have two versions that live in Lightroom, which is my selection on the left again, but I have four versions elsewhere. Um, there, are, there is one version as a file and three versions that live in, uh, in Apple Photo. And I can, I can double check, I can launch Apple Photo, and here it is. So the instant viewer gives me instant information about all the versions of a shot across all my apps. Let's look at this one. Again, two versions and uh, uh, one in my current selection, one some, somewhere else. It also tells me when there is no version elsewhere. So for example, this image here has no badge. It tells me that I'm looking at one version in Lightroom and there is no version elsewhere. So the instant viewer gives me a, a great information about all the versions that live anywhere else. And the little badge here uh, tell me, tells me really what I'm looking at. Um, here, this is a unique version that I have in my current selection. And here, this is a, this is a shot that has had many attempts to be edited in, in various apps. And I can quickly access uh, those uh, those versions by launching the app. These are instance in Picto. Once you have all your pictures referenced by Picto, um, Picto can leverage all the metadata in your files, in your catalogs to create a great search experience across all your images, across all your apps. And this is what I'm going to show you right now. Search works pretty much the way you expect search to work in a, in a photo app. It combines the, um, the selection, so whatever is selected on, on the left or uh, using the middle column, and, uh, and criteria that you can set up either by using the, the toolbar here or by typing directly into the search field. Uh, so if I, for example, select a filter based on color label, it will find those images add that uh, criteria into the search field. Clicking on the cross just removes it. I can search uh, images that have a specific rating, uh, less or equal to a specific rating, and again, it adds the criteria in the search field. I can, of course, type um, in my search field, and again, it's going to propose me a number of uh, options. If I type something like 100, it's going to uh, find uh, criteria that uh, match that. For example, I can find all the images that have uh, uh, ISO 100 uh, in, my, in my content on the left. It goes a little bit further because during the ingestion, we, uh, we will attach, um, analyze the content and attach some, uh, some keywords to, to content that you can then use in search. So for example, if I type canal here, I'm going to find uh, one image that has explicitly been tagged uh, manually by, by this word. But uh, I also have two keywords that pop up. One of them is canal uh, urban, and this is a tag that's been added automatically by Picto, and it lets me find images easily. Uh, if I type person, it's going again to find all the images that have a, a specific uh, that are showing persons. So search by, works by combining the selection on the left, uh, whatever is being filtered here, and uh, things that you might type in in search field. And we look into your keywords, into your faces, into all the IPTC fields, into all the exit fields to um, find the data. Once you have all your images in Picto, you can start doing things that were not possible in other apps, namely combining images that come from different sources into one or multiple collections. And these are the Picto albums. I'm going to show them to you right now. Albums are a great way to uh, gather images, um, again, regardless of where they live. Um, and they work really the same way as as, uh, as standard albums. You just create them and they appear on, on, on your left here and then you add content to them. So here I have started to create an album about the Grand Canal in Venice and 
I'm just adding this image that I have here. If I click on the, the album now, I can see that this album gathers images that are either files here, that's an image from Lumina Neo catalog here, Lumina AI. I have images from Apple Photos um, and Capture One. An album can contain individual versions, but also contain full instance, like in this case, I've dropped my three uh, uh, versions inside the catalog. Uh, you can also create a new album from uh, selection. Simply name it and it's ready to be used and to uh, gather your data. You can then export content from an album uh, as we've seen in, a, in another video. Picto has been designed to reference all your images, but what happens when you keep modifying your underlying catalogs, editing images in Apple Photos, ad adding images, modifying albums, uh, etc.? Well, the idea is that Picto will stay in sync with what happens when you uh, change the underlying structure of your catalog, when you add images, when you edit images in whatever uh, catalog that is indexed. And this is what I'm going to show you right now. Victor has been designed to be the hub of uh, your photos and um, we want it to be always in sync with uh, what happens. So let's, let's see what happens when you, uh, when you edit an image in its underlying app. So here I am in um, looking at the Apple Photo image that I've just uh, launched into Apple Photo. What I'm going to do is I'm going to perform some edits on this image. I'll just make it very quick. I click on the magic wand. I'm going to increase the vibrance and I'm going to add a little bit of vignette here. All right. So this image has changed. Um, I quit and now notice how next to the uh, to this Apple Photos album, there's a new icon that appeared here that tells me that something has changed and in the underlying source. So I can click on the synchronize button and now my image has been updated. Picto has just picked up the changes, has not ingested any other images, just the ones that have uh, changed. Uh, it is the same if you add content, if you delete content, if you add albums, if you modify anything in the underlying um, uh, application, we are going to pick up those changes and just uh, re-ingest what needs to be done. Let's do something else from launch this photo back again in, a, in um, Apple Photos and I'm going to export it to the disk. So I've prepared a little album, uh, sorry, a little folder called My Exports that is already uh, referenced in Picto. I'm going to export it right there. Notice now how again the, the icon has appeared next to this folder that's currently empty. Um, but if I click on the synchronize button, uh, it appears in Pito. Notice also how cool it is now because uh, this image is now telling me that there are actually two versions, the one that was in photos and the one that I've just exported uh, um, on this, these are two different files, and yet the instance magics uh, recognize them as, as one uh, single instant. So what happens if uh, Picto is not running while the changes has, are performed? So let's do it now, go back to other photos, and uh, I'm going to turn this image into black and white. Click done, quit, launch Picto. And here again, I have my little icon that's telling me that something has changed. And if I click on it, now is the, the updated image appears uh, into Picto. So we synchronize content for all the, all the catalog types that we support from Lightroom to Luminar. And, and of course, we do the same for, for folders. So you can always be in sync and um, synchronization happens very quickly, much faster than redoing an ingestion, of course. And so the idea is that you keep your content up to date by do is doing these incremental changes uh, as you add content, as you edit it uh, in the underlying apps. 
we hope you like this uh, short introduction to uh, to Picto. Um, there are lots of features and a great depth to the product, so we will post more videos that go into more detail into one of each of these uh, these features and, and discuss them, so you can really understand what what Picto is uh, is all about. We we are very proud of what we've done with Picto, and we hope you really like the product. And now it's really time to enjoy your photos. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.